I am here. I am here with Dr. Omer and Shalatana again. I know a lot of you are like, when will you interview him again? When will you interview him again? So here he is, inshallah, today. So um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep him uh, with us until um, we have really benefited uh, from him at least. Everyone has to go. But uh, I mean. anyway, so uh, Dr. Omer, today I want to talk about uh, two, three things. I want to start off by talking about uh, the promised land. Mm. And uh, and then I want to talk a little bit about the Ottoman Empire. And then I want to talk about humanism. And then if we have time, then we might touch upon some aspects of marriage and, and how all of this has then affected in terms of the divine archetype that you refer to, how this has affected mm. marriage, marriages, Muslim marriages, marriages in general. So uh, let's start with uh, the promised land. Uh, okay. The uh, may it please Allah to uh, inform us and grant us His refuge now for the sake of our listeners that we may speak the truth and bring to things, bring to mind those things which are important. Uh, this matter of the promised land is something that needs to be understood from a pre-Quranic perspective. Okay. If you just look at the Quran, you will not see it in its entirety. Now, that's not to say but that you the will see Quran, things like yeah. they know him like they know their own sons. You will see yeah. that which is confirmed in your own hands, right? That's yes. mentioned over and over again. So there's this. Hands. The yes. Quran refers to this knowledge, but it doesn't give it out specifically. It says, uh, the Quran says, I came to complete the, this is a reminder. Okay, remind you of what? Of what came before? It's a completion of what? Of what came before? Okay, mm -hmm. now most Muslims are not looking at what came before, and that happens to be one of the advantages that I had as a revert because I knew what came before. Now, I may not be an, expect, an expert in what came to complete it, but I know what came before. And that's a perspective which is uh, necessary. And uh, that's what I want to offer. Because some of your listeners have uh, questioned my remarks uh, last week with respect to Arab imperialism. And mm -hmm. when, I, when I said they crossed the Euphrates, this was a mistake. This was an error. Yeah, you see, one of our uh, one of my uh, teachers I studied with for thirty years, Doctor Isra yes. Ahmed. Uh, Doctor Isra Ahmed said that you cannot fully understand the Quran without the knowledge of the previous books. And a very good example of that, a very simple example mm. of that is mm. there is no chronology in the Quran for the prophets. There's no yeah, chronology yeah. in the Sunnah for like Adam came, then Noah came, then which prophet came. The chronology of the prophets prior to Prophet Muhammad basically comes from the previous scriptures. Yes. Uh, and it's interesting because the Old Testament is basically li ri even written in a historical uh, chronological order, at least, you know. Yeah, the, old, the Old Testament is more chronological, but even there, uh, you only you have a limited number of prophets. I mean, there were 124,000 of them, to the best of our knowledge, okay? <laughs> so that's quite a number. Yes, that's All right. right. And we have a limited perspective, of, even if we're only looking at Al-Turat and Quran. We mm. still are not looking at the whole picture. We mm. are still not looking at the Tawheed of yes. this historicity, okay? So, uh, but let's get back to the promised land, and um, I'll try to encapsulate this swiftly so we can move on to the other topics for the sake of those people who are interested. Now, this promised land is something that was promised to Ibrahim. But before Ibrahim, it was uh, described in the book of Genesis. Uh, 
And the book of Genesis describes the rivers that actually surround it. And at one end, you have the Nile, then you have the Euphrates, you have a few others in between. So it gives the perimeter, and it's pretty much the, uh, the, the design for the uh, greater Israel that people are now talking about, that Eratz Israel, okay? But this land was promised to Ibrahim, to his children. Now, I know, I understand there's a, there's a um, dispute between Ishmael and, and uh, the uh, other son, who was named Jacob, uh, but, um, or Isaac, rather. And um, uh, the Muslims are contending that Ishmael was the firstborn, and the Jews are contending that Isaac was the firstborn. That's immaterial here. Okay, it's not that it's not important. It may be in the long term, but in the Gestalt sense, the promise was made to Ibrahim and his seed. Okay, mm -hmm. and specifically. That seed, his seed, his descendants, who remained Muslim. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, we're not referring to Islam. We're not referring to uh, Judaism. We're referring to obedience to God. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're saying obedience to God, we're also concerning all those 124,000 prophets all over the earth, okay? Mm -hmm. This is all inclusive, all right? Islam was already spread all over the earth by means of these prophets speaking to each and every nation in their tongue, okay? <laughs> According to what they understood. So let's put away these Arab blinders, take them off. Everything that's Arabized, Arabanized Islam needs to be removed if you want to see the truth, okay? Otherwise, you just put blinders on and you can't, you can't see except for what's in front of you and what you're feeding on. And that's what the ulama is giving you, you see. And they are blinded uh, for the most part because they don't know what came before, ex with the exception of a few teachers like you just mentioned. So let's get back to Genesis, the promised land. The rivers describe it. Well, is this an earthly place? Yes. Is it a paradisical place? Yes, it's both. The analogy is for both, okay? The analogy is for the promised land here and hereafter. The names of the rivers describe attributions of uh, which are divine, which have been shared with men as a reflection. That is so interesting. Dr. Omer, do you know there's a saying of the prophet that the prophet that Euphrates is from the heaven? Yes. And and so so it's it's like the borders of both, right? Yeah. Uh, in a sense. Yes. Anyway, I just found that interesting. Yes, this is this is a border. So if you look at it uh, analogically, the borders describe the limitations uh, that are described by Islam itself. And those limitations are further delineated by the Sharia. OK, so there are levels here of understanding levels. OK, and so the initial restoration of the kingdom of, of Islam, the kingdom of God, that was promised by the son of Mary, by, by Isa. He said, wait, he said, uh, Ahmad is coming. He will bring it, okay? The kingdom of God is at hand. Mm -hmm. So what would that, that refers to the fulfillment of the promise that God made to Ibrahim, okay? So that the promised land would be given to Islam and under the dominion of Islam, mm. under the dominion of an Islamic Khalifa, okay, mm. beginning with the prophet, beginning with the dominion of the prophet and the final prophet. So this closes the whole thing from Genesis to Muhammad, you see. It's mm. a complete circle. There's nothing more to be added to it now. Hmm. Except the history of disobedience. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and 
that is now running its course. And when one of the prophets asked uh, Allah about this in the Old Testament, he said, how long, how long, how long are we going to have to put up with these sinful, disobedient, stupid fools? Mm. Okay. The prophet banging his head. And Allah responded, until the iniquity of the Amorite has come to its full. Mm. So now the Amorites were the original settlers, the original people in the Levant, in the Holy Holy Land. Now this includes uh, everyone who became what they call Sumerians, the Akkadians, all these sort of people. They were all included in this Amorite uh, concept. But this Amorite goes beyond that physical seed, and it refers to those who are disobedient. So if you become disobedient, you might as well just have joined the Amorite tribe, you see. And that iniquity has to complete itself, come to its fulfillment. So the Jews, if, we, if you want to look at them this way, they were given the covenant, the initial covenant, uh, through Moses. Now, Abraham announced it, okay, he uh, uh, announced it by destroying the idols in Ur, okay? Now, this is the old Sumerian kingdom, and the king of Babylon at that time threw Abraham into the thing. Of course, that didn't work, so they had to sit down and discuss things, you know, man to man. And Abraham uh, gave him Islam, and the king said, look, if I accept your Islam, then I have to do away with all of my perks, okay? And this is an archetype. <laughs> this is why your leaders are disobedient, you see, because they don't want to do away with their perks, mm -hmm. their perquisites, all, all of their advantages of being a leader. It's all materialism, and, and, and uh, Nimrod, the king of Babylon at the time of Abraham, he saw this, and he said, yeah, what you're saying is true, but if I do this, <laughs> what happens to me? <laughs> what happens to my kingdom? Uh, da, 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 da. No, I can't do this. I, I'm not going to give this up. It's like the professor who uh, confessed to me that there is no Islamic finance. He mm -hmm. said, if I, if I confess that, if I give it up, he said, I'm going to lose all my perks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I won't be able to support my family. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. This is not an excuse that the death angel is going to accept. Of course. Okay. Um, you listen to me, dear people. This is not an excuse that the death angel will accept. Okay. So now... Ibrahim uh, leaves Ur. Uh, Nimrod has lost face because, uh, you know, he lost more men trying to throw Ibrahim into the fire than, <laughs> than he could afford. So he let Ibrahim go. Ibrahim becomes the Bedouin. He becomes the first Bedouin uh, in the region that we, uh, that we can talk of as a prophet, okay, in this, in this sense. And so his seed, he goes through, he wonders, he goes here, he goes to the Euphrates, he goes over to the Nile, he goes north, he goes south, he sees the whole area, and then after he's finished his walk around, and the whole time he's going around, he's not, he not only went to Mecca, he went to other places, wherever he went, he would stop for a while, and he would set up an altar, okay? Mm. And this altar was generally some kind of a rock. It's the same sort of rock that you would yeah, that they have now uh, in uh, Jerusalem uh, at the on the on the uh, uh, Temple Mount, but it's not really a temple. That place is just there for the for the rock, the Abraham. So, can I ask you this? Do you think that Abraham set up more than one Kaaba? Not Kaaba. He set up not a Kaaba. rock. Okay, okay, just a marker. Okay. Just no, no, not more than one Kaaba. There's okay. only one Kaaba, okay? Oops. But okay. This, this land is very big. And so wherever he went, he would set up a rock and he would circumambulate while he was speaking. This was the prophetic example even before him, mm. okay, of those who came before him. We're talking now the sons of Noah. The sons uh, preceded Noah, okay? They would do the same thing. So this, is, this, was, a, this was a custom. This was how they prayed. Um, 
So Abraham did this all over the promised land. And then after he was finished, uh, there was a, a, a place in which he uh, sat down. I think it was Bethel. And he had a discussion with uh, God. And God said, OK, you go do this, you go do that. You sacrifice uh, this bird, you sacrifice another one, and we make a new covenant. Hmm. OK. And then that's when God gave the promise to Abraham, this land, uh, which you just circumambulated, he said, I will give to you and to your seed. And Abraham said, to all my seed. And God said, no, only to those who are obedient. I will give them dominion. Well, isn't this the same thing that Prophet uh, Muhammad said mm. in Mecca in last yeah. speech? Yes. Yeah, it's the same thing. So what I'm saying here is that Muhammad came to complete this covenant. The dominion was given to the Arabs only for the promised land. That's it. Mm -hmm. Islam is a separate matter. Mm. Islam is something that spreads metaphysically and then is incorporated and incarnated by virtue of the caliphate not as an Arabic caliphate, but as a caliphate in every nation that accepts it. Mm -hmm. you see? So that, for example, uh, as I, I, I gave you this example before, if I'm your neighbor and I bring you to Islam, then you become caliph, an Islamic caliph. You were already caliph, you just didn't know it, you see. Mm -hmm. Now you are caliph in your own house, okay? And I have no dominion in your territory. None. That's yours. God gave it to you. He gave you your women. He gave you your children. He gave you your means to support them. He did not give them to me. He mm -hmm. only gave me Islam. Mm -hmm. You see. Now I pass this over to you. But the Arabs, they crossed the Euphrates. How many times did they have to cross before they were permitted to go? It was the first defeat that they suffered, you see, and they were well, defeated. A lot of the kings that the prophet had sent letters to, if they had become Muslim, they would have remained kings or leaders of their communities. That's right. They would have remained kings. Well, they still remain kings, whether they're Islamic or not. But had they accepted Islam, they would remain, they would have become Islamic kings. And mm. so and uh, with, with no submission to Arab, no, no, no loyalty owed to uh, Mecca other than the Qibla, you see, other than the symbol, symbolic submission, not to Arab, to Allah, hmm. to Allah. Okay. Now, the Arabs have this, this, this problem with pride, okay? And uh, many Muslims have become subject to the same pride. It's male chauvinism. We yeah. want to be the boss. Okay. <laughs> this causes sectarianism. And, you know, the first uh, Muslims, when they were arguing and trying to work out Islamic theology as if it needed to be worked out, it's not really all that necessary. It's very simple, you know. Uh, but they, instead of trying to work out in harmony something they were arguing with each other okay with the bias oh my opinion is correct no you're wrong my opinion is correct and you know so we get this oh then you get this shake thing oh my god my shake is smarter than your shake my dad can beat your dad please grow up all of you grow up for god's sake <laughs> Oh, did I just lose my temper? Maybe. <laughs> I'm on the brink of it, you see. Because this thing, this, this is really anger-inducing. This is, this, these, these are the things that make God angry. Yes, okay? that's true. They make Allah angry. And the angels, they just face plant, you know. They just, <laughs> they say, what, what is it with these men? When are they going to grow up? Hmm. Okay. When are they going to grow up? And we can get to that when we come to marriage. But anyway, getting back to this imperialist thing, getting back to the promised land, all it was was the initial fulfillment of the promise to Ibrahim was fulfilled by Muhammad 
And Isa warned the Jews. He said, look, you guys were given the opportunity. Musa gave you the law. He gave you the Sharia. You messed it all up now and you've rejected me. Okay. So now it's gone from you. Nothing's going to remain. Even this temple that you have now is going to be destroyed. Okay. Yeah. So the Jews are finished. They're finished. Yeah. They have no metaphysical authority except that which is given them by Iblis. And uh, Dr. Umar, I want to mention, uh, it might be of your interest, uh, I've done uh, some research on the, uh, the Temple of Solomon. Uh, the Wailing Wall they have right now is yeah. not part of the Temple of Solomon. It's, it was actually oh. part of the Roman fort. Of course, and it's not Jesus the Wailing Wall. Jesus said not a stone will remain of everything that you see. That is exactly <laughs> what happened according to the Quran and the Bible. The Ottoman and, and, and the Ottoman not a lot of Muslims. Yes. Yeah. It's not it's not the temple. It's, it's a not. Roman fortress wall. And the Ottoman caliph knew this five hundred years ago. And it, the Jews insisted, and the Jews who insisted were the students of those who became the Sabbateans. They and were they, in magic and, and all those yes. uh, other occults yes. too. So, so, you know, they, you know, I don't know why the Alamans said yes, I, I would have killed them myself rather than uh, uh, s subject themselves to the superstition. Yeah, we just bought into the narrative that they gave us and we said, oh, okay, yeah, this is the, you know. <laughs> and what's interesting is Omar, when he went to Jerusalem and when Jerusalem was handed to him, he did not pray in the church out of the fear that they would convert the church into a masjid. Yes. So when the Prophet is taken to, to the ascension and he lands in Jerusalem, I mean, obviously the same sensibilities will be there, which is that yes. he would not pray. It's not even there to even pray yes. there because it's, yes. it's been demolished. Yes. But he would pray in a different location. And yes. that location where it seems like he prayed was closer to the Roman fort. Uh, yes. And then the actual synagogue that, or the, uh -huh. the, the temple yes. of Solomon that they're trying to build. And now they're yes. trying to, and you know, now the logic is so messed up that it's like, oh, well, Muslims must be bad because our synagogue's supposed to be here or our temple's supposed to be here. <laughs> and since They will since, never rebuild that temple. They oh. tried to rebuild it 300 years after Isa and an earthquake swallowed up what they were trying to do. I hope, inshallah, what you say is true. Well, it's, it's scriptural. Okay. It will never be rebuilt. Allah will not permit it. Okay. They will probably have to put it up on Mount Hermon because Allah will not permit it to uh, be built in Jerusalem. But that's a different matter. Mm, okay. But we go to this thing of the Qibla and the switching of the Qibla is because uh, Muhammad came to fulfill the prophecy, uh, the, pro the promise to Ibrahim, and the rock of Ibrahim, where he was supposed to have uh, sacrificed Ishmael, uh, or the Jews say Isaac, that is where the Temple Mount is. The rock is, is there. Okay, so uh, that was where the uh, the initial promise began to be completed with Ibrahim at the moment that he went to sacrifice son in the ancient fashion because he had been brought up a pagan you see mm. and uh, in those days that was the tradition to show how much you love god by sacrificing one of your children you see mm. well this is completely and totally satanic it's madness and uh, wh whatever the story is whatever the real uh, reasons for that event they remain to be seen you can speculate all you want but allah stopped it OK, and mm -hmm. he provided the the ram for the sacrifice. And then from there, we, we come up with the, everything that is Islamic about, you know, when you go to uh, kill an animal, you, you pronounce the name of God over the, the animal and that, that then becomes halal. OK, uh, so all of this has to do with that rock. The rock is in Jerusalem. It's still there. It took care of itself all this time and why people want to kill themselves over it is 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 foolish okay whether they be jews or muslims i just say you know let it be the rock can take care of itself it has its own angels da 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 da, da. stop 
fighting each other over this business and get on with the, the matter of, uh, uh, of understanding, okay, which is what we're trying to do here. So all I'm saying is that the Arabs overstepped the borders that are delineated in Genesis and they're delineated according to the uh, circumambulation of the promised land that Ibrahim literally did by foot as a as a uh, uh, um, um, uh, Bedouin. Okay, <coughs> so we can dispense with that now because what happened after the third crossing of the Euphrates was Arab imperialism, and the same thing happened in in Egypt. Okay. Uh, the border there is the Nile, not beyond the Nile. So all of the Maghrib becoming Arabized is, is you know, and giving paying tribute to, to Mecca. All of that is in error. And just because the prophet said it was going to happen doesn't mean that God want, willed it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you fatalists out there, just because God has foreknowledge doesn't mean that it is predetermined. No, it's free known. Allah knows what we're going to do. He doesn't force us to do it. There's a difference. Right. We have choice. So and this there is also a saying of the Prophet, which the Prophet says, "Takunu fikum nabuwa, masha Allahu an takun." Prophethood will remain amongst you as long as Allah wills it to remain. Then Then there will be khilafa on the footsteps of the Prophet. But then the Prophet said very soon after that, Then there will be kingship, meaning Muslim kingship, that will bite, yes. that will be a yes. tyranny. And yes. then after that, the Prophet mentions the situation we're in right now, Mulkan Jabriyan, uh, basically mm -hmm. imperialism. And the next phase, which will be Khilafa Ala Min Hajj and Nabuwa again, inshallah, which will be uh, Khilafa on the footsteps of the Prophet, perhaps when Isa alayhi salatu wasalam comes back. Or around that yeah. time. Inshallah. Inshallah. Uh, the, the thing that happened here with the Jews was this kingship business. And I should mention that uh, because this it's key to understanding what happened to the Jews. Mm -hmm. And this happened during the days of uh, Prophet Samuel and the days of, uh, of uh, uh, Prophet King Dawood okay, and Suleiman. Because prior to them, there was another king, his name was Saul, and actually there was a king before him as well, whose name I've forgotten. But in any case, Samuel was the prophet over the Jews, and he was the authority. He was the judge of all matters. And the people came to him and said, look, we want a king. We don't want you, I mean, we don't mind you, but we want a king just like the heathens, okay? We want a king just like the Philistines or the, the Syrians, you know, or whoever else was out there. We want a king like Pharaoh. And Samuel, Samuel face-palmed again. He said, he went back to God. He said, how long, how long, how long do I have to put up with these foolish people? Hmm. And Allah said, give them what they want. Give them what they want, okay? Hmm. They chose the kingship, so they chose the kingship. And Samuel warned them, well, the king's going to do this, the king's going to do that, he's going to take the best, da, 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 da. He's going to overtax you, he's going to overburden you, etc., etc. If that's what you want, Allah says you can have it. Okay? It's, a, it's the same principle that has to do with the Iblitic um, uh, delusion. Okay? And the Iblitic license. Iblis has license to delude men to seduce them according to their choices, according to their desire, okay? So uh, the Jews desired a king. Allah said, look, if they desire the king, let them have it, okay? And Samuel said, oh my God, okay, well, okay, you have your king. So from that moment forward, even though Suleiman and Dawood came and they established the initial buddings of this kingdom, it was not according to divine will, it was according to human will. And this, this brings us to humanism, you see. Mm. The whole concept of the kingship brings us to humanism because there's only one king. We say it. Uh, in the night prayer, you are the king, you are the truth, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in the heavens. Yes, yes. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. I really but like that. They switch phrase. it around. Yes. Yeah, they, switch. they switch it now. Thy will be done on heaven as it is in earth. They switch it around. That's why you see the, the Buddha with the, the statues, one hand going down, the other one going up. Okay. Iblis has inverted the meeting, you see. Uh, I guess Allah allows that to happen. So this you know? has allowed, uh, yeah, it's not Allah's will. See, people try to think it's Allah's will. No, it's human will. Allah has set the spiritual law. He said, if you do, he says, if you do, then I will do. Okay. He's not, he did not say, I will you to do what is wrong. No. If you do what is right, then I will do what is right by you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I will give you the dominion. Well, the Jews chose what is wrong and they had their kingdom. It didn't last very long and they eventually lost it. And then Isa came to tell them, look, you return to the law of Musa or you're going to lose everything that you have here. Mm -hmm. This is your last chance. And they rejected him and they lost everything. Now they're trying to get it back. Can I, can I dive into reasons. that a little bit more? Because there might be some similarities between that particular situation and us, which is, I mean, yeah. if you look at it from the perspective of the Pharisees, uh, you know, yeah. they're the scholars of that time. And here's a prophet telling them what to do. And they don't want to accept what he's saying. But they have to also yeah. deal with this big kingdom, the Roman Empire on top of them. Kind of like the situation the Muslim countries are in today. They got the yes. big Roman Empire on top of them, telling them what to do. Yes. And then you might yes. have uh, uh, little nobodies telling them, oh, you're wrong. You have to follow Allah. <laughs> <laughs> and and so, yes. uh, uh, so, you know, it, when, uh, I guess my question is, is that uh, what role does the, did the Roman Empire play in all of this? at that time yeah. between the ulama of that time which is the pharisees and the sadducees and 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 just so i, I I'm, I'm clear about what i'm trying to make the links here is that mm. the mm. prophet said our history would be very similar to their history yeah and at a time he didn't where say that, did he? Uh, uh, yes, okay said, mm. all those yeah. things come to my ummah that came to bani israel yeah. See, in in when when from Musa to so they started with two prophets and ended with two prophets, Musa and mm. Harun, Aaron, and Jesus, yeah. and Yahya, and in this mm -hmm. there's a, about a fifteen hundred year history, right? Yeah. And in that, yes. you might find it interesting that the first attack they had was from the Syrians from the north, mm. and the first attack we had was from the Crusades from the north. Mm -hmm. And their second attack, the big one, was from the Babylonians from the east. Mm -hmm. And our second big attack was also from the Babel, uh, from the Tatars, the Mongols mm -hmm. from the east. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then their then their big attack after that was from the Western Empire, the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is after the the Maccabi power, and then the, the the Romans had come over, and then we had our second rise instead of mm -hmm. the. Maccabi, or we had like the Ottoman Empire, you can say. Uh -huh. And then after that, they they also got conquered by the Romans, by the West. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of similarities. And in their end is Isa, and our end is also Isa. And so we're at a time where Isa is not here, but the Roman Empire is there, and he's coming. Uh, yes. And so yeah. uh, I, I don't know if I complicated the situation, but I'm asking about what was going on there that's similar to what's going on here in terms of the different layers of the scholars versus the Roman Empire versus the Muslim mm. land to the extent that they want to kill uh, Isa alayhi salatu wasalam and not only, they've already killed Zakaria, they've already okay. killed Yahya. Yeah. Uh, let me explain this in terms so that people will understand it without going into all the historical detail, which I'm not sure I could do anyway. But archetypically, what happened was the Jews lost divine protection. Okay. They lost not only divine autonomy, autonomy, dominion, but they lost God's protection. Mm. Now, this protection carried them 
it went with them even into exile, into the first exile and second exile in Babylon. And mm. God returned them. He returned a small group of them to give them one more chance, one more chance, because Allah is That's all merciful. That's what the Quran support. says. Yes. We return yes. you back to see what you do. Yes. So now what happened? They lost this defection. They lost divine protection when they rejected their final prophet. Isa is the final prophet to the Jews. Okay. Yes. He was not a prophet to the Gentiles. He was a prophet to the Jews. When he returns, he's a prophet to everybody in this particular role uh, as, uh, as a Messiah. But at that point, he only came for the Jews. And he even said that. I only came for the Jews. Yes. I came to warn them, to give them their last warning. God's had it up to here with them, no more. So mm -hmm. what happened was they lost divine protection. And with the loss of the divine protection, well, how shall they explain this? Just you use the, let's just use the prophet and uh, Medina as the example. Okay, there's the prophet with the small contingent of Muslims and his allies in Medina. They're being attacked by uh, a large army from, uh, from Mecca. They, they, they do what they can to defend themselves. They build a ditch around the whole city, but it's still not enough. The Meccans are about to bridge this ditch and go in and slaughter them. And what happens? Divine protection. Mm. Okay. The Jews lost this. Okay. The Jews lost this. And now today's Muslims have also lost this, except for the odd individual or the odd group of those who are remaining obedient. Mm. Okay. Wherever there is disobedience, wherever there is compromise with the system of Iblis, there's no divine protection. Mm. Unless one is doing the comp compromise uh, on one basis only, and that is the basis of taqiyya, okay, for the benefit of the Muslims. I wrote this in uh, my... my um, uh, my book, The Hand of Iblis, I said, look, if you're going to do this, if you're going to enter the system, there's only one reason for you to do it, and that is to take from this system whatever you can get for the benefit of those under your right hand, okay? Mm -hmm. No other reason to compromise. So you're essentially a spy, but you're a spy against the enemy, not against your brothers and sisters, mm -hmm. okay? There's a difference. Okay, so that divine protection has conditions. The divine, this is the same divine protection that caused the spider to weave the web when mm -hmm. the prophet was hiding in the cave. It's the same principle, it's the same. So Muslims have lost this, the Jews lost it. That's why Rome was able to come in. Not because Rome had superior military power, God mm. could have destroyed their ships in the sea. God mm. could uh, cause an earthquake to swallow them up. God could send, could send a thousand swarm of bees to confound their soldiers in the field. Mm. This is easy for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when you have lost divine protection, you have no weapon. You, can, you see, Muslims are saying, oh, we, if we get nuclear weapons, if we get these latest machine guns, we get the latest AR-15, we're going to be set. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's the wrong way to think. Yeah, you need those. You need the ditch around Medina. But what you need more is Allah's protection. Mm -hmm. And if you are out there abusing your women and buggering your children in the madrasas, madrasas you don't have God's protection. Yeah. You're a bloody hypocrite, and God is not going to toy with you. Mm. And those under your authority are going to fall under the same curse because they're submitted to you, you hypocrite. Okay. I hope some of you are listening to this old man sitting here in Japan, far, far, far from you. And I'm far from you because I don't trust you. You cannot be trusted. Okay, I chose to leave. I put up with this stupidity for 10 years as an alim, and I said, okay, enough. I got fed up with them just like God got fed up with the Jews. Mm. 
All right. Is that clear? <laughs> That's very clear. It should be very clear. Okay. And I'm speaking in this manner. I'm speaking this mm, hard truth because it needs to be spoken. The spell has to be broken. Mm. If it's not broken, your people are going to go deeper and deeper and deeper into the lizard's hole. Pull out those that you can. Forget about the rest, my brother. Forget about the rest. All right. Mm. Let them let them be eaten by the lizard. Oh God. So anyway, <laughs> that's my uh, explanation for the promised land. Okay. Mm. I and hope and people... so this is the reason why when Omar went to the promised land, they just the Christians there just handed it over to him, just like yes, yes, they, they knew were, he was they coming. wanted to almost yes, it seemed like because well the oppression of the Byzantine uh, Empire under what you might call the Byzantine Church was 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 really strong, okay, and th that Byzantine um, spirit. Uh, you know, it didn't change much when the Ottomans took over. And the Ottomans, those jinns still live there. Turkey is a whole different matter. Turkey is a center for Satan. Uh, Istanbul is, uh, is uh, you know, it's one of Satan's head headquarters. Okay. <clears throat> the whole continent, the whole, that whole peninsula there. Right. In the Black Sea. And the how country. magic went from Babylon it, to Anatolia. Oh, and, 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 yeah. The magic went there, the demons went, the jinn went there, they're still there, their families live for 500 years. So it's not been, it's only four or five generations of jinn, you see, <laughs> since, since the whole Roman transition. Uh, so this whole Roman thing, in answer to, to that, the Romans, they're kind of like Genghis Khan. They had some things uh, correct in principle. They were doing everything correct according to not the Islamic dean, but according to the pagan dean. And the pagan dean is, uh, is almost correct, except that they have this problem with idolatry. Mm -hmm. You see, the moment you have a problem with idolatry, that's just enough room for the jinn to come in and cause chaos. Mm -hmm. But as long as you're feeding the jinn, as long as you're feeding them, they will allow you to establish the order you need to keep on feeding them. Okay. Oh, and very good stuff. point. So okay. this is where that good uh -huh. tree, the tree that gives good and bad, kind of yes. like uh, has that dimension. They have to have good in order to keep feeding them. Yes, yes, right? because the it's kind of like the employer has to be nice to his employee, even if he hates them, because yes. they make him the money. Yes. yes, yes, yes. It's like that, and the whole Freemasonic system is set up like that. You see, mm. so uh, it's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It produces good and evil fruit. The tree of life only produces good fruit. That's the archetype. So you just have to bear that in mind. So I don't know how much time do we have left now? You, you, you're still fasting, aren't you? You're about to break in, <laughs> into our business time, huh? Yeah, uh, I have to um, probably go soon. Um, we can, uh, if you want to have some last words, we're at 43 minutes. I wanted to... Um, wrap up today around 45 minutes inshallah okay. and uh, and then you know inshallah Allah will allow you to come back and we will you know we only finished the first of the three topics we had in mind uh, it's so, not even finished but at least at yeah. least the first circle is closed i think your archetype is clear and those who listen and who have ears to hear i think they understand now what the uh, the the limitations were and how the Arabs overstepped those limitations, okay? And then entered into the same mistake that the Jews made by wanting a king, okay? The Khalifa, Khalifa became a kingship. That's what it became after, right. the, the, after the death of the uh, five righteous Khalifa. Uh, so uh, that, 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 that was the big mistake, overstepping those boundaries. And those boundaries... Uh, they mark uh, the the limitations for each and every one of us. Uh, there's a kingdom, there's a rulership, there is a caliphate, okay, in our lives. We have to stick to those limitations. The moment we overreach those boundaries, we are losing divine protection. Mm. Okay. And then that gives Iblis e license to enter into our lives and to take over, mm. okay? 
Now, the pious Muslims, those who are the most pious of you, some, some, some of them are maybe Sufi sheikhs, but I think the, the most pious don't even consider themselves to be Sufis. Matter of fact, they don't even consider themselves to be pious. <laughs> They're just doing their best. These people have divine protection, okay? They have divine protection. And there are many, many uh, uh, narratives and anecdotes to this effect. But to the entire, for the entire Ummah, the Ummah no longer has this. The Ummah has maybe the ear of God. And uh, maybe Allah is saying, okay, to the angels, okay, over there, yeah, they're doing okay. This group, they've uh, gone to live like the Bedouin. They've established their little biodynamic farm. You protect them, okay? You have so full if, license. If you, were, if you had the ears of Imran Khan, yeah. the pr prime minister of Pakistan, or if you had the ears of Erdogan, the prime minister of Turkey, or, or Malaysia, uh, mm. what would you say like what would you advise what okay so i guess the advice goes at different levels the well, first would would be... I, do? I i would i for, uh, the first the first device is that of talba okay and not only individual talba but you have to bring the entire nation to talba mm. you have to stand up in the masjid and say we were wrong okay and because we were wrong and you obeyed us you're also wrong so we so need to Imran Khan or Erdogan or whoever is whatever needs to come on TV yeah. and say we are tomorrow we're going to do Toba and I will be at this masjid or or however it's organized right yeah and, but it needs to be a national acknowledgement of we're all doing Toba collectively yes. you know all of you yes. are the, the, and if you read the Bible you the find example there, is in the, yeah in the Bible this is, you this find is what in, this Sorry. is what King, yeah, this is, yeah, you stop it now, you're a bad boy. <laughs> this, this is what King, <laughs> this is what King Josiah did, okay? When he found out that they were on, that the Jews were on a wrong uh, foot, footing with God, and they rediscovered, they, they rediscovered the law of Moses, which is essentially the Decalogue. It had been hidden away by the evil priest who had listened to the uh, jinn under uh, Suleiman's day, after Suleiman died. King Josiah called the whole nation together, and he said, we're going to have three days of fasting and prayer mm. in Tauba. And then we're going to uh, turn things around. And so the judgment that was going to be called against, that God had already called against Israel, that was put off until Josiah died. Mm. Okay, so divine protection was restored, and, mm. and Josiah's kingdom, his reign, was preserved until his death. Okay, mm. so this is something that that's the example. After you perform Tauba, then you receive guidance. So I wouldn't go beyond there. Okay, what shall we do, Doctor Omar? No, you start with Tauba, and mm. then. You uh, ask God for guidance, and then God will bring you the advisors that you need. Okay. Nowadays, when we talk about Toba, it's mostly individual. No. But in the Bible, we do find the prophets yeah. telling, and in the verses of Quran also, uh, yeah. you do find all of you repent. You know, they yeah. all of you repent, and 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 the prophets would be like, you all have to repent, right? It would yeah. always be like this: whole nation has to repent. Yes. So we as the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have to repent and anyone that's watching this video should mm -hmm. uh, maybe take a minute of being part of that collective and in mm -hmm. fact maybe even share this part of the video if not the whole video where you know there's like a movement, a Tawbah movement, right? Like a movement, uh, Every, yes. the whole Ummah is doing Tawbah to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and particularly the the leaders because uh, Allah sees them kind of like, uh, you know, I guess in, 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 in his world also, even if they're bad, they represent us in a sense. So <laughs> they have to do Toba too. Yeah. yeah, I'll just say one thing in closing. You leaders, the Prophet already said to you, uh, and I think it's in the Quran, uh, that if you lie to your people, if you lie to you them, there's no place for you in Jannah. There's no place for you, okay? 
leaders are particularly responsible. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So uh, let's just close there, brother. And uh, inshallah, okay. we have had a, a good session, and this will be of some benefit to those who care to tune in. Absolutely. So, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much. May Allah protect you, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum. And you too, brother. How about